Power Knot in the Louisiana Bayou, this is Willow Springs Lake in northeastern Arizona, the site of the second annual Crayfish Festival. The event was born out of the idea that crayfish are bad for Arizona's environment, but delicious to eat. My family's originally from Louisiana. Grandpa moved the family out here in the 60s, 64, but we still have a lot of Cajun heritage and a lot of family back there, and very much still involved in, in the Cajun lifestyle. And one day last year, my dad had read an article about how bad crawfish were for the Arizona rivers and streams and that they're eating the fish population and the vegetation. And so he said, I'm going crawfishing. But he said that on the radio. And with about 100,000 listeners, there are a lot of people that are interested in joining him. He said, if you want to go, call me. We had a lot of people call and had a, had a really good turnout last year, but we ran out of crawfish in about 25, 30 minutes. So this year, the organizers and volunteers began setting their traps out several days ahead of time. They go out once in the morning and again in the evening to collect their catch. I'm Arnie, Trapper Arnie, I call myself, because I do trap. I trap crayfish primarily, and it's a hobby. I've been into crayfish ever since I was a little kid. I was born in Sweden, so that probably explains that. Okay, now, well, maybe that explains it for him. We have um, around 25 people up here this weekend. We've set 55 traps, and we've been trapping since uh, Friday at around, well, Friday afternoon. And uh, we've probably come up with, uh, I would say, at least 3,000 uh, crayfish. It's a little hard to estimate. We got huge uh, buckets full of crayfish. Yes. Last night, this is about a, a third of what we got from last night. Crayfish are a freshwater crustacean closely related to the lobster and somewhat smaller than their Louisiana cousins. They are not native to Arizona, and this invasive omnivore is doing a lot of damage to our lakes and streams. That's why it's so important to remove as many as possible. Remember, you do need a state Class A fishing license to catch crayfish, but there is no limit on the number you can take. By the time this weekend was over, the catch totaled 400 pounds, or about 8,000 crayfish. Crayfish were intentionally introduced many, many years ago. They were introduced for vegetation control, and they were also introduced, obviously, as a bait item. And I think folks thought that they were doing the right thing. Quick this time of year. Today we know that there are some resource damages that are associated with crayfish, which are not native to our state. When I came to the United States uh, 50 years ago, and when I came to Arizona, I was delighted to find that Arizona is full of crayfish. Of course, everybody who uh, fishes for trout is not so enthusiastic as I am. But, I mean, we can both have our our druthers in this respect. I have my crayfish, and uh, if I reduce the number of crayfish, well, then the trout fishermen will be happy too. It has a tremendous impact. Uh, of course, we're fishermen, and so uh, we're concerned about the, the fishing possibilities, but uh, anyone who's a sportsman in, in Arizona uh, needs to be concerned about uh, the crayfish impact and, and how, they, how they affect uh, various uh, ty types of creatures in aquatic habitat. They eat a lot of the minnows, a lot of the fish eggs, and they eat a lot of the vegetation that uh, keeps the lakes from turning into mud puddles. That's a big one. Man. There's a lot of, there's no one. Crayfish are very easy to catch. You can use almost anything smelly for bait, from cat food to fish tails to officially compressed crayfish bait. Then you set your traps out along the edge of the bank. Traps vary in size and style, but the crayfish don't seem to mind. Here is a typical trap that I have made myself. And uh, uh, this happens to be the kind that I use for, for my own uh, catching. A shrimp trap. I bought it in uh, Washington, Anacortes, Washington, for shrimp. This one we call the kid's trap because you really have to watch it. Uh, you don't want to leave it for more than a half hour, 45 minutes unattended. And that, the, as opposed to the other traps, you can leave out overnight. A lot of the kids like a little bit more activity so this kind of trap it looks just two two rings with the uh, wire and you set it on the flat bottom and that cork floats in the water top and you have your bait in the middle and after you look down there and you see your crawfish on there you pick it up 
and the crawfish get stuck in there, then you pick them out and throw them in your bucket. So we brought a bunch of those up for the kids to play with. Then we have these cylinder traps where it has a hole in on both ends and it opens up and you put your bait in the middle. And then the crawfish just crawl in there and you know you check them every eight to 12 hours. And then the most productive traps we had, we actually, uh, these are game and fish traps. They're just perfect squares and they spring out and they've got a little pouch for the bait. You open that and put it in there. And then when you go and check it, you just open the trap and you shake the crawfish out. So they all, for the most part, overnight traps all have the same concept, a spot for the bait, a hole for the crawfish to enter in a funnel form and about 18 inches long. This is going to be awesome. Crayfish uh, uh, trapping probably is a little more popular than the fishing part because uh, the kids can really get into uh, collecting crayfish. Uh, they play with them, they, they catch them with a fishing line, they, they trap them, they, they net them. And uh, I have uh, four children and, and ten grandchildren and that's one of our most popular uh, family activities is to go out with nets and traps and, and uh, just do nothing but but uh, have a lunch and, and uh, net and trap crayfish and, and then we, uh, we prepare them and, and eat the, the larger ones at least and just have a, have a good time. Which takes us to the main event. Over 800 people came out to sample the lobster-like delicacy. The cook knows what he's doing too. He is Pierre Romero, the owner of Baby K's Cajun Kitchen in Phoenix. Right now we're just dropping in the crawfish with corn and potatoes and onions and some special seasoning. When you catch them, you're gonna wanna get them in a salt water. Basically cleans them out. And you just want enough salt to cover them, then cover them with water. You'll see what Waking happens, up. You, can, you can tell. Then you simply wanna put them in a pot of boiling water with uh, seasoning, which usually would consist of cayenne, garlic, salt, pepper. Bring them to back up to a boil, cut the fire, and then let them soak like they are right now. And that way they absorb all that flavor and uh, then you just dump them out on the table and go to it and there's lots more coming. eating crayfish seems to involve a lot more peeling than eating hard to get it out but all that effort does pay off delicious also <laughs> very very good good <laughs> Radio talk show host Rosie Romero even demonstrates the best way to eat them. And then you pinch down here at the bottom, and then you just put it in your mouth and pull it up. If you really want the seasoning, you crush the head and suck the brains out. A lot of strange people suck the head, so you can try that if you'd like. It's overrated. So why does the Romero family and all the other volunteers work so hard to put this festival on each year? <laughs> you know. I, I love crawfish for one. I'd sit there and I'd eat myself to death if there was enough in front of me. And two, any, any excuse I need to get outside, I'll use. And the, the weather up here is much nicer than down in the valley this time of the year. And if eating crayfish is not your thing, there is crayfish dancing, crayfish kissing. Wow. <laughs> and they are great to terrorize your little brother with. And check out this guy. He even thinks he can hypnotize crazy. Stand on their heads. Seriously, though, the festival is a fun way to get across a very serious message. We use crayfish as a way to help remind the public that intentional or accidental importation of, of some species can be a real resource damage to the state of Arizona. We want to make sure that we address our behaviors and we know how to avoid accidental introductions. And if we're considering an intentional introduction, we consider the risks very, very, very carefully. And there are things the public can and should do to help keep future aquatic pests out of our lakes and streams. We do lots of things without even thinking. We load our boat up after a fishing trip, perhaps in one part of the state or even in another state. But do we take the time to stop and look to see whether we're dragging any weeds with us? Do we take a look inside our live well and make sure it's cleaned out? Do we make sure there's no mud that might harbor things like New Zealand mud snails? Making sure our equipment is clean is a great way for us to avoid accidental introductions. In the meantime, we can all look forward to the next crayfish festival, where everybody can capture a little Cajun spirit and help rid our lakes of this most unwanted guest.